Hey guys, it's Teddy. On May 14th, I got to give a presentation to the Fairgrounds Advisory Committee. They were in the first week of gathering information so that they could ultimately make a recommendation to our city council about what the future for the Fairgrounds property might hold. I gave a 10-minute talk, and uh, I'll go into that slideshow with you right now. So I took this map of Petaluma, and I drew a pink circle on it. That's the fairgrounds, is the pink circle in the center. And then I took uh, some heavy red lines, and I marked up some of the main roadways in town. Petaluma Boulevard, Lakeville Highway, Caulfield Lane, Washington Street, and McDowell Boulevard. And I think when you look at the way I've got this map marked up, it makes it very clear that, hey, look, the fairgrounds really is the geographic center of town. However, in 1952, it was a very different story. There's that pink circle, and that's the outer edge of town in 1952. Same location. In 1952, there was a west side of Petaluma and an east side of Petaluma, and that's it. There was no midtown, and the far eastern edge of town was the fairgrounds property in its same location that it is today. However, it's a little bit different of a story, isn't it? We've got the 101 freeway today. We've got an entire east side of town that's been built. And the east side has grown so much that, that there's actually as many people living in the east side of town as there is in the west side of town. In fact, I believe there's more people there. And Midtown kind of acts like an interesting bubble that divides the west side of town from the east side of town. It's a tale of two towns, really, because... Midtown serves as a drive-in and drive-out island. Nobody's walking in Midtown. Nobody's hanging out. Community doesn't gather in Midtown, except for a few rare times per year. Almost no one is walking, and almost no one is riding a bicycle in Midtown. It's mostly a dead zone in terms of people congregating, hanging out, and rubbing shoulders together. For most of the year, Midtown does not foster community, except for the fair a few days out of the year in the Speedway racetrack. There's a small school and a paintball game site. Otherwise, it's a dead zone for most people most of the time. But this location, this fairgrounds property, is literally the central park of Petaluma. It's behind a chain link fence where 95% of the population has no access to it 95% of the time. So here's a typical Saturday morning at 10 a.m. In fact, it's last weekend. I'm on my bicycle. Hey, I know. I'll go check out the fairgrounds. I got to give this talk today. So uh, why don't I go right over there, see what's going on. And look, the gate's open. Cool. I ride up to the gate and look at the sign I see in the upper left-hand corner. No public access. No walking. No skateboarding. No bicycling. I don't know if I showed up in the car, if it'd be legal. Probably not. I'm just not allowed. I'm the public. I want to come into my Central Park area, but I can't because there's no public access on this property for me. Our Central Park is hidden behind a chain link fence and disconnected from Washington Street to the north. The chain link fence access to our Central Park from the east side not only has barbed wire on top of it, it's also got these black tarps so you don't see in. You can't even look into the Central Park. From the west side, all fenced off, barbed wire, no access. The consistent urban design language of this entire complex, the entire property, it's chain link fence and limited public access. Here's the swimming pool as you see it from the skateboard park. Looking through a chain link fence. Looking the other way from the skateboard park towards the speedway, it is chain link fence, chain link fence, chain link fence, and some paved parking lots in between. No public access. How can a publicly owned park have no general public access? Our Petaluma Central Park is a series of chain link fences, limited access automobiles only, and of course, no one wants to ride a bicycle here or walk here because there's nowhere to go. There's no there to arrive to. The current design of the fairgrounds property, 
our Petaluma Central Park is for 95% of the people, 95% of the time, a dead zone. No access, nothing going on. But, but our Petaluma Central Park could be an everyday community gathering place full of people and activity like this photo. Bicycle-friendly and pedestrian-friendly neighborhoods build healthy community. Our Central Park could become a true destination for everyone every day. Or like this place, who wouldn't want to come and walk here every day, plunk in the middle of Petaluma? But for 95% of the people in Petaluma, 95% of the time, most of our central parkland is not usable and not accessible. There's no gathering of community in our central park area, only some passive shopping, you know, at the Target nearby and Whole Foods, by design, Midtown is drive-in and drive-out because there's no reason to walk there. No one's going to gather here because our Central Park is fenced off to the public. What if our Central Park became a place to walk to instead of just drive by? The more walkable our town, the more healthy are our community relationships, physical health, and emotional health. A central park is a destination to walk to and mingle with other town folk. A fairgrounds, our fairgrounds central park could be something more like this instead. It could be. Or it could be like this instead. Or more like this instead. 365 days of the year for everyone. My recommendation to this advisory committee is that before planning the specific land uses, such as the fairgrounds, a school, more stores, a public park, or more houses, what are the guiding principles that you would suggest to the city council? Is this property a central park for everyone to use every day? Should this property be locked behind a fence? Is this location the geographic center of town who gets access to this property? Everyone? Every day? Or only some people on some days? Can this property build a stronger sense of community for everyone? Do we want more nature and plants on this property? So I recommend that you develop a guiding set of principles first. Then, secondly, later, figure out the uses of the property. First, what is the purpose of this property? What role does this land play in the overall urban fabric of our town? This is the center of our town. Why is it fenced off? Petaluma Central Park, guiding principles. What is the purpose of this land? Who gets to use it? When and why? Once you've figured that out, then move on to the specific uses, which would be informed by the purpose and the why above. And my last slide asks this. What if our Central Park became a place to walk to every day instead of only drive by? Take down the fence. This is public property. 